Hey guys, uh, today's screencast we're going to be looking at orbits. Recall that our last lecture we were uh, exploring the solar system and we know there are eight planets in our solar system that all revolve around the sun, right? And the reason why they all move around the sun is because the sun is of course the most dominant object in our solar system. It's massive and since it's so massive it exerts a very strong gravitational pull. So in other words, it's really tugging at all of the eight planets in our solar system, and for that reason, we all revolve and move around the sun. And we do so in what we call an orbit, right? And an orbit can be defined as the path an object takes as it travels around another object, right? And of course, the eight planets in our solar system re revolve and move around the sun, they orbit the sun in nearly circular orbits, um, not perfectly circular, uh, and in fact we refer to them as slightly eccentric ellipses. Because even if you looked at them, they would appear almost perfectly circular, but if you conducted some very detailed measurements, you would see that in fact they're, they're kind of out of round. They're not perfectly round, right? And, and since they're not perfectly round, we can actually measure them and then calculate how out of round these orbits are. Well, how can we do that? We can use our Earth science reference tables, and we can find out how out of round an orbit is by looking up the equation for eccentricity. And eccentricity is the equation to find how out of round an orbit is. So take a moment, you can pause the screencast if you need to, and look at page one in your Earth Science reference tables and find the equation for eccentricity. Okay, so hopefully you found the equation. Um, pretty easy to spot, I think, on page one. And uh, the equation is, it's fairly simple, right? It says eccentricity equals the distance between the two focal points, or foci, divided by the length of the major axis. And so you're thinking, yeah, okay, well that's, that's good, but that doesn't really mean anything to me at this stage in the game. Right, of course not. So let's figure out what these focal points are and what this major axis is, because these are the important components of an ellipse an orbit that's kind of out of round. So what are the focal points? Well, think of a circle. A circle has only one center point to it, right? Well, an ellipse actually has two fixed points instead of just one central one because it's not a perfect circle. And we call these focal points together foci. And so we can measure the distance between these two focal points. And we usually do that by using a ruler, measuring to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. And then once we get that distance between these two points, we simply take it and put it in the numerator of the equation. Well, that goes over the length of the major axis. So what is that? Well, it turns out that the major axis is the longest diameter of the ellipse. And the major axis always cuts straight across and through the two focal points. So by measuring one end of the ellipse to the other end of the ellipse, by measuring the major axis, we get the distance in centimeters to the nearest tenth, and then we simply put that in the denominator. And then it's quite easy, right? Then we just plug and chug. So let's try one out. I think it's always helpful to draw this out. So let's let's make a drawing. Uh, if you guys need a scrap piece of paper or something to try this out, go ahead and do it. You also need a calculator. So if you need time to get all these things out, pause me. Otherwise, uh, I think we're just going to get right into it. Okay, so we have an ellipse, and we need to determine the eccentricity if the length of the major axis is five centimeters and the distance between the two focal points or foci is two centimeters. And it says that we have to round our answer to the nearest thousandths. All right, well that shouldn't be too bad. Let's draw an ellipse first, all right? Now this isn't gonna be perfect, 
so try not to make fun of me. But here is our ellipse. Okay, now it's not meant to be a perfect circle because it's kind of out of round. It's definitely not a perfect ellipse either, but it'll do. Um, and we know that part of an ellipse, we always have two focal points, so I'm going to draw those in. All right, so those two dots will represent the two foci. And uh, we need to know what the distance is between those two focal points. Well, that's not too bad because it's already given to us. They measured it for us. They did all the hard work. So between the two focal points, if you measured it to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, you would find that it is 2.0 centimeters in length. Okay. So that's half of the equation. We also have to know what the major axis is. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, the major axis, of course, is the longest diameter of the ellipse. And we know that the longest diameter of the ellipse always cuts straight through the two focal points. And if we measure that distance, we find that the major axis length is 5.0 centimeters. Okay. There it is, those are the two values. So how do we set this up? Well, we always do it through the ESA format. So let's start with the E. Equation, ladies and gents, the equation for eccentricity. Eccentricity equals the difference between foci over the length of the major axis. Okay, let's substitute S. Eccentricity equals difference between the two focal points. That's the difference between those two center points, which we know is 2.0 centimeters divided by the major length of the axis. That's the longest diameter of the ellipse, which we measured to be 5.0 centimeters. All right, so that's not too bad. So let's answer. Eccentricity equals, when you plug and chug, get your calculators out, 2 divided by 5. What do you get? You get 0.4. But wait a second, it says round to the nearest thousandths. 0.4 is not to the nearest thousandths. So 0.4 is to the nearest tenth. So we gotta keep going. 0.4, zero, that would, be, that would be to the nearest hundredth. And to the third place over, that would be to the nearest thousandths position. And so we always, whenever we're calculating eccentricity, we always carry it out to the nearest thousandths position. Now, are there going to be units tacked on to this? Normally we do, but what happened to centimeters? Centimeters get canceled out. So here's the deal. It's kind of nice. This is the one equation that does not have a unit. So you can have a naked number. So our final answer here is 0 .400. Zero. Okay, well, what does that value really mean to us? Well, it turns out that the values range from 0 to 1. Okay, so if you ever get a value greater than 1, you know you're doing something wrong. You can only have eccentricity values that go from 0 to 1. All right? And what does it mean if it's close to 0? Well, 0 obviously looks like a circle, doesn't it? And so 0, when the value is close to 0, the eccentricity, the ellipse, is very circular. Why is that, right? Well, with a perfect circle, we only have one focal point, right? And therefore, there's no difference in the distance between one focal point. And so it's zero. And so when you divide anything into zero, you get a value of zero. So when you have lower eccentricity values, the more circular the ellipse. On the other hand, so we have sort of a continuum here. As that value increases and gets closer to 1, 
the more elliptical it is because the focal points are further are farther spaced out and so when those focal points increase in distance they get closer to the value of the distance or the length of the major axis and so when you do the math those numbers get closer to 1 so when eccentricity values approach 1 it becomes more out of round as those values get smaller and smaller and approach 0 it becomes more circular so let's test this out if we look at some data this is in our earth science reference tables there is a column designated to the eccentricity of the planet's orbit right here this is found on page 15 in your reference tables and we can see that all of these different planets have different eccentricity values for their orbits some values are high some are quite low so what I'd like you to do, take a moment, you can pause the screencast and see if you can identify the planet whose orbit is the most circular and then which planet is the most out of round or elliptical. Go ahead, try it out. Alright guys, so let's figure out which planet had the most circular orbit. Remember, for a circular orbit, we're looking for a very low eccentricity value. The closer it is to zero, the more round it is. Okay, well, the lowest eccentricity value belongs to the planet Venus at point zero zero seven. So what that means is Venus has a very circular orbit. Well, then, which planet is the most out of round? We're looking for the orbit that has the highest eccentricity value and interestingly enough it's the planet who is a neighbor of Venus which is Mercury so Mercury's orbit is far more out of round than the orbit of Venus okay well how does this all look all right now where is the Sun in relation to all of this well it turns out the Sun is at one of the focal points. So what that means is the Sun is not at the dead center of our solar system. It's slightly offset. So as the planets revolve around the Sun, those planets are sometimes a little bit closer to the Sun and sometimes a little bit farther from the Sun. Right? So here's the Earth in its orbit. Um, it is right on the major axis. Right? We know the major axis is the longest diameter and of course it cuts straight through the two focal points and so when the earth is on that major axis at this position you'll notice that the distance is really quite short we call this position the perihelion position all right well helium well that's referring to the helium gas in the sun para means that we're very close right think of a periscope it brings objects or it makes objects appear closer to us when we use in a submarine right so in our perihelion position the earth is closest to the Sun all right six months later though whoa we're way over here right and we call this position the aphelion position this is when we are furthest from the Sun you can see our distance is much greater so I think it's a good idea to label these two positions on the diagram in your notes right we have a perihelion and we have an aphelion position so what does this mean obviously sometimes we're close to the Sun and then there's some points in our orbit when we're very far from the Sun well it turns out that gravity not only is determined by how big something is but it's also determined by the distance to an object so really gravity sort of equals in terms of its the the strength of it it equals the mass of an object larger objects have greater gravitational pull over the distance because as distance increases the gravitational pull decreases in other words the closer you are to an object the stronger the gravitational pull. 
right? So in order for gravity to be very strong, the object has to be very large, and you have to be very close to the object. Well, when do we have the greatest gravitational pull with the sun? When we're closest to it, right here at the perihelion phase. And when we're closest to it, our orbital velocity, our speed, is much greater. So we're moving very fast in our orbit when we're at perihelion because the sun is tugging at us and we're moving very quickly. Right? And then when are we moving the slowest? When we're the furthest point at our aphelion position. right? And this is when we're moving more slow. Because we're far away, there's a lower gravitational pull and therefore we move more slowly in our orbit. Okay guys, uh, that's it for the screencast. You guys are going to work on the problem on the half sheet of paper that you have. Remember to use a ruler and measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. That's it. Have a great day.